All right, folks, welcome back. We're still we're here in Milwaukee, a big night uh, on the stage last night. Uh, I, I, I just want to, if we can open this up real quick, I want to, Governor, you, you've been on the stage before, uh, and then obviously, Mark, I want to, you kind of take over and tell us what you were hearing, but Governor, yeah. what, what do you think of last night? I mean, what would you, what, what, how do you rate the candidates from last night? Who did well and who, who might have come up a little short? <laughs> well, uh, probably the candidate that did the best was the one who wasn't there. Uh, I thought it might be a mistake, uh, but uh, I don't think as good. And I thought DeSantis gave good, solid answers. He was concise. He was on the mark. He gave confidence to his donors that might have think things were, were uh, slipping away. But I, at the same breath, I don't think there's any Trump voter out there who said, oh, there's my guy. Uh, I made a mistake. Uh, I think uh, uh, Vivek made an appeal to the people who like uh, Trump, who are excited. I think there are probably millions of people who may have heard a little bit about him, but hadn't fully been exposed to him, that liked what they heard. They liked uh, his, his intensity. They liked his outsider appeal, the same reason like Donald Trump. Again, I don't see him doing more than picking a little bit up because those people are already firmly in Donald Trump's camp. And quite frankly, a little bit on foreign policy. I, I think he went too far and Nikki Haley kind of woke up halfway through the debate and took a shot at him. And I think upped her ante, uh, at least as, as well. Uh, I really looked and said the four in the middle were the four I was watching. Mike Pence, uh, well, I don't you know, know where he goes uh, necessarily in the future, but, but I thought he did many of the things he had to do to, uh, to at least show he was awake, he was on top of things. He was not just a number two guy. Uh, he probably gave, ironically, the fiercest defense of the Trump-Pence record of, of all the people on the podium out there, which it seems interesting because a lot of people seem at odds with President Trump. And then basically, my view, uh, having been on the stage, but, but sitting out with the crowd re reacting as well, was uh, the two people on the left and the two people on the right and the far end should be gone. Uh, and that includes a guy I thought might actually have a good performance, Tim Scott. Tim's a wonderful guy. Uh, he's too polite. Uh, he kept trying to get his hand up and they said, we'll come to you in a moment. And they came to him an hour later. Uh, it was it was a bad move. Christie was entertaining, but he's got no future. And uh, Doug Burgum grew up in a small town. We know that very well, but uh, that ain't going to get him anywhere. And at, at some point I served with Ace as always a friend, but about 10 minutes in, I said, you got to shut his mic off because he's wasting time from the others. Yeah. Mark, I want to obviously turn this over to you to get your take. But the one thing that I'll say that I, I made some comments in, in morning radio interviews that I want to repeat here, which is I, I kind of look at a debate like I look at a, a, a sporting event, right? I'm a hardcore Patriots fan. Uh, Governor Walker is obviously a Packers fan. But that doesn't mean that you can look at a game. Like I can still say the Jets had a good game. I will never root for them. I want them to lose every day. Uh, but but I think when you look at a debate, I think that there are candidates that did well. Does that mean they're going to win? Does that mean that I want to support them? No, but I think I think people have to look at these debates, one, and say, did it move the needle or was it just a show? And I think Governor Walker's point to me was the, the real important one. I think Donald Trump last night uh, was the winner. No one stole the show um, that, that undermined him. Uh, but I think a couple people stood out and a couple things. I agree with governor Walker that there, there are people that I, I thought Tim Scott, I talked to his folks last night. Um, and I said, great, he's hopeful. He's optimistic. I think he's a great image for the party, but he, he didn't come across as somebody that's out there fighting against the Biden agenda. I mean, and again, I, no offense. I think he's a great guy uh, and he's a great messenger. But is he the one that we that people are going to say, that's who I want to fight? Uh, lastly, I would say on the Vivette thing, I talked to a lot of the Trump folks last night. They were all very positive on Vivek's uh, yeah. performance. And that to me goes to what Governor Walker was saying, which is uh, I think that that he the, a lot of the Trump people like what he said. It doesn't mean they're going to vote for him. And remember, lastly, He's at 6%, 7%. So if he gets a, even if he doubled his support, he'd be at 10. I mean, so anyway, Mark, tell me what you, what you heard and what you thought with the standout moments. Yeah, look, I think the Trump people ex got exactly what they expected. I think almost everybody performed precisely the way they did. The one person who surprised me was Christy because I thought he would be more aggressive. Yes. But I, I, I'm surprised by that. Everyone else performed yeah. pretty much, pretty totally much pretty much the way they expected. And you're right. The Trump Wait, do you think, hold on, I, you said everyone, I actually was surprised by, by Nikki Haley. I, I thought that, 
uh, I, I sort of said there would be three things and the, the you, DeSantis and then Vivek. And then I thought there would be one person. I yeah. thought that one person was Nikki Haley. I thought she gave a tremendous response to the issue of life. Uh, and I think, uh, again, I don't know that that's going to move the needle, but I thought that of the other people, she stood out. I thought four people did better than they might have, but not surprising. I, th I think Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Vek Ramaswamy, and uh, uh, now who am I forgetting? Uh, it's it's very Rick Perry. Say again? It's very Rick Perry. And one more. Mike Pence and, and, and DeSantis. And DeSantis. Yeah. I thought the yeah, four DeSantis, of them, sure. I thought the four of them did... <laughs> They did what they set out to do in the sense that they got yeah. to show themselves. I think yeah. the other four, other four did not. But compared to Donald Trump, to, as you said, compared to changing the game, nobody did it. She, she was, she was good. I think Mike. If you said to Mike Pence people, as I did, are you happy with the way it was? They're very happy. Ramaswamy, very happy. But yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't <clears throat> matter because the Trump people got exactly what they wanted. Right. Eight people, two hours. Do the math. Uh, real quick, if you have a question, you're listening on this, uh, let us know. Uh, we'll try to get to, we're going to get to some of them and say, real quick though, I am interested that, that the, the Mike Pence thing, I actually yeah. thought he looked defensive. Uh, I get Governor Walker's point. He, he made a very a def articulate uh, case for the Trump Pence administration. Well, no kid. I mean, I, I was like, great. You were the vice president and that's your yeah. stick. You're like, but, but I thought Vivek got under his skin and it showed. Right. But, but again, we're talking about Mike Pence. And again, Mike Pence's whole pitch is, I'm the pro-life candidate, I'm the principal candidate, I'm the experienced candidate. And he got to say that in the context of the debate. So I'm not, I'm not saying Mike Pence is now gonna be at 20%, but if, you're at, if you talk to the Pence people, they got to say their thing. I think the other four did not get to say their thing. And again, the one I'd single out is Governor Christie. Governor Walker, I wanna ask you about Governor DeSantis because he's the one who, again, let's be realistic, before the debate, now, he's the one with the best chance to be the alternative to Donald Trump. I've heard mu many mixed things about whether he did well enough or not. I'm wondering, if you're, if you're Governor DeSantis, are you happy today with his performance or not good enough? I think I'm happy with his team, but I think he's got to step it up a notch when yeah. we go out to the Reagan Library. I, yep. I, I looked at that. He was within the time frame. He filled it. He didn't do what I yep. did, which was back off a little bit. There were a <laughs> couple moments where I thought he was kind of watching the back and forth between Pence and Vivek or, or Christie and Vivek. And, and I thought, man, he's got to engage in this. He can't look crazy, but he's got to engage it. I think he did the number one thing he needed to do, though, was calm his donors. Yep. I thought they exactly. saw a president. They saw a guy in command. I saw exactly. it secondly, and you heard it in the crowd that was there. There were a lot of DeSantis supporters. There are actually surprisingly there were a lot of Nikki Haley supporters in the crowd uh, from where I was sitting in the middle there. Um, they were definitely pumped up when he gave, he gave some good, solid answers. The one weak spot was uh, when the question was about, would you support Donald Trump if he was convicted? <laughs> he, I don't know about you, but I looked and I was like, he is looking to his left to see what others are doing. It, it, it was he not a profile, in hand not a profile in courage. Right. I thought that was going to nick him a little bit. But to me, it was solid. But if he's going to move the needle, he's going to have to be he's going to have to. I thought he needs to embody a little bit of a vet and show that yeah. kind of passion, that kind of confidence. He wasn't weak, but he wasn't that passionate. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, Mark, real quick. I, I, there's a couple of questions that I, just, I actually it's funny because they mirror some of the things that I thought we would talk about. So I just want to jump in real quick. Phil asked, what did you guys think of the Tucker Trump thing? Uh, I'll just tell you real quick. I, I was sort of, I thought it was an interview, right? It, it wasn't counter programming, but I think right. what it got was the talking point, which is Trump is going to go out today. And I asked his folks last night, I asked Chris Lasavita, his top campaign aide last night in the spin room, what did, you know, will Trump attend another debate? And he said, look at how many people watched him on Tucker. It was 75 plus million people that got views. It gave them the talking point that they wanted, which is more people watched us than you. I think that's all that they wanted. Does it change the game? No. But it gave Trump the opportunity to say, I got more people watching than you guys did. I'm still the maybe, alpha maybe, maybe by a lot. Right. Oh, no, no. I Look, again, 
we all know TV and ratings and to say that Twitter views equal, I, again, I'm not, but it's a talking point. And that's what they wanted. They wanted a talking point that said, you guys, like the highest debate was the 2015 one, which I think was 17 million on the first stage, 8 million on the second. There's no question that more viewers, quote unquote, watch yeah. the Twitter event or the X event, whatever we're calling it today. Um, but I think, as I said, at the end of the day, this wasn't about moving the needle. It was for Trump to be able to say, I don't need to show up because I have more people watching me than he, you guys on that stage. He's not going to the next debate. He's no. not going to the Reagan Library. So the, the question is, do they get him to go to Alabama or not? And I think he'll decide if it's in his interest to go. Uh, but but you're right. The, the, the plan that they had to show eight guys and one gal fighting on the stage, them above the fray, communicating their message. They got their plan. And Governor if you Walker. watch that video, yeah, if you watch that video, there was no news on it. The news was exactly what you said, Sean. <laughs> it wasn't that he made news. It was that he can, as of this morning, it's 174 million views. Now, we all know if I looked at that while I was sitting in my seat for two seconds, it counts as a view. I didn't watch the interview there, but it counts, and it doesn't matter. If you're explaining, you're losing. So anybody on the other camp who said, oh, those aren't really views, Nobody gets that. Nobody pays attention. All they hear is 174 million people tuned yep. in. Exactly. Let, let me ask you. So Buckley asked this, and this is fascinating because somebody brought this up to me right after the debate. He said, was Joe Biden one of the winners last night? I, When I was doing – I was writing notes <laughs> last night after the debate and during the debate for this call, and I was reviewing kind of the, the – but somebody said to me, literally a Trump campaign person said the real winner tonight was Joe Biden because more – the, the meaning their point was he didn't sustain the attacks that we could have leveled uh, had we all fired our, our mm -hmm. shots on him. I thought it was a really interesting point. I, I don't think that we prosecuted the case as a as a movement, as a team, as a party against Biden's failures as they could have. Uh, but I actually and, and it was like I said, it wasn't top of mind for me. So was it for either of you guys in terms of what Republicans missed out? Well, look, there were four targets, right? Some people at times targeted Biden. Some people targeted DeSantis. Occasionally they targeted Trump. And of course, I think the big story, which we haven't talked about, is they spent a surprising amount of time targeting a guy who's young and never run for office, right? Ramaswamy right. got, he was targeted much more than anybody. So if you've got four targets in two hours, you're not going to hit any of them hard enough. And the other thing I'd say is not one person on that stage mm -hmm. to me targeted Biden in a way that's going to break through. They said the things that Republicans say, but nobody had a, an innovative, uh, pronounced theory of the case to say, this is why Joe Biden can't be president anymore, that I heard that I think would break through to voters. And that's the problem, right? Because that's what the RNC wants. They want, they want somebody to be the anti-Biden champion. So, you totally, know, totally agree on that. <clears throat> yeah, totally agree on that. And the the interesting thing as well is the closest I got to it was Governor DeSantis. He tried, even the pivot he made on January yep. 6th to say, no, it's about January 2025. Yep. He kind of went down that path. He kind of had him above the fray. I thought that was a good moment for him, uh, for people really paying attention out there. But part of it is, and, and Sean, you'll get this as someone who is intimately involved in actually the running, the mechanics of the debate. If I'm the RNC at this and I look ahead, now, maybe Fox Business uh, will be a little bit different. I think uh, back in 2015, they did a debate here in Milwaukee. I think yep. it was November, if I remember that. It November was 10th. really good. It, it, it was, it was uh, Cavuto and Maria did it, and nobody remembered the moderators because they did a really solid job. But I would push you guys the RNC to say, you, you got to tighten the format here. You can't be going. I mean, they lost control. It was out but what of is, control. But, but, but what, what does that, oh what does that mean? Though? What does that mean to well, you? But, I but agree. But what is example, that Chris Christie, this is one of the questions for a while there, is talking for 45 minutes. You know, right. I didn't really 45 minutes, but it seemed like it. I'm like, there was no bell for him, but there was a bell immediately for DeSantis. They went off on these wild tangents about stuff that most primary voters, most voters in general, but primary voters don't really care about. Where was more talk on China? Was more talk on the economy? Why do we spend so much time on abortion when they all basically have about the same position? That was not a winning strategy for the RNC going forward. It should have well, been more attention to Biden. 
I, I, I look, I agree. One of the questions was how is Fox's performance? And so, Mark, I want, but I, 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 I agree. I mean, where we didn't talk about the military, we didn't talk about China, as you mentioned, we didn't talk about veterans. I mean, this was, I, 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 I kind of looked, and I think that it wasn't just the issues, right? You brought up abortion, it was how it was framed. For most right. Republicans, not most, everyone on that stage is pro life. Why didn't we, right. we, we talked about it in a very defensive way. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning, how are you going to cower as political people? Because you, right? Everybody was. <laughs> but they, I thought, but they tried to, they tried to flip it, right? They all talked no, about no, they right, late term. Like, my question to you is, and I think Governor Walker framed this the right way in terms of the RNC. How does like I, I looked at last night in Fox's performance, and I went, this, if these are supposed to be the conservative network. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not impressed. I thought to myself, you guys, Fox, were auditioning yourselves to to make the the corporate world look like, wow, you covered issues that we care about. I mean, they were right. They, I, they but Sean, there's no way. But John, as you know better than literally anybody, there's no way for the RNC to control that. No, right? no, no, no. But I think that that Governor Walker's point is that that one of the points that I've made to folks is you're right, but they will get blamed for it. And so they need to look after CNBC, the debacle that it was, we yeah. were very clear. OK, yeah. you're out. NBC's not in. We need more moderators. Like we insisted that somebody, Mary Catherine Hamm, was at the ABC debate. Hugh Hewitt right. was at the Like we were like, hey, if you're going to host a debate, we want a conservative voice at the moderator table. And we won on that point every time. My question is, if they go forward, how do we ensure that someone's sitting at the moderator table that's asking questions that matter to movement conservatives and Republican primary voters? Because last night I looked at that and said, you might as well have had Stephanopoulos sitting there. Right. But there's no way to control that. I was surprised at how much time they spent on abortion. I really was. But I, I, there's nothing the RNC can do. And and they well, haven't I, said, I don't entirely agree with that. I, I because what I can think, they do? What can what they, they do? Can do is, look, here's the point. And again, I will say this at this point, maybe because it's gone too far. But where's the Daily Wire? Where's the first? Where's the blaze? Why right. did they literally limit the people? The only people that bid on this was CNBC, NBC. And the problem is they went to Fox. The reason they didn't announce a media partner for the second one is because I don't think that they, they didn't know what to do. I, the next one's going to have to go to like Fox Nation because they're right. running out of Foxes. I mean, <laughs> but, gonna, like, and, they, and, and they haven't said who the talent is for the second one. Right. So yeah. th 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 this is a problem. That, as you know, when you take on sort of dual sponsorship, I can't tell you last night, and you guys may have had this experience too. I would ask people, who's in charge of this? Is it Fox or the RNC? Oh, right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such I... a bifurcated thing, but the questions are not the RNC. No, no, no. And that's what I get you can't ask the specific question. I remember pushing back on this, Sean, with, with Reince eight years ago about saying, I get you can't ask a moderator, to, to, you can't censor their question, but right. you can define the format. Uh, to me, uh, even part of the 30 seconds back and forth, I think you've got to rein that in. You, you got, it got too yeah. out of control. It was whoever just you know, inserted themselves into that. Some people played by the rules. Some people didn't play the, by the rules. I get that's a rating thing, but I actually didn't think it helped the ratings. I thought it went on for too right. long, too much of a mess. So that part you can rein in. And I think you're exactly right, but, Sean. But this Inserting some other voices to, to at least hold some of these people accountable so that well, you got a couple more. I mean, I'll give you one more example. So Young America's Foundation was a partner. We had all sorts of kids ask questions. Yeah. The one question they used from us, just a little candid insight here, was a kid who was told by Fox that they wanted something on climate change. So he wasn't asking because he was upset about it. He said, a lot of kids are worried, they're worked up about this. Uh, what would you do on climate change? It came across as though this kid was one of right. the, you know, a little scared. That's not that was Fox saying, oh, we got to fill the box just like any other corporate entity would. I'm glad you brought that up. The one thing that just again, I know people are probably watching and saying, well, then why? Why does the RNC partner with them? You, if, if you weren't here uh, and you're watching this, and you weren't in Milwaukee. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure all of us posted to some degree on, on, on pictures. Mm -hmm. These things cost a ton of money. They're 1.5 right. to 2 million dollars. I mean, the five servers that you point, there were 6,000 people in there last night. Security was nuts. And the, the point that people, I get asked this all the question, well, why didn't you just, you know, why doesn't the RNC just stream them? Or because somebody's, it's, it's a ton of money. It's a ton of bandwidth. And so you have to, like, it's a give and take. It, how do you balance that? I was amazed at how much Fox spent on this. It was, yeah. it was, a, it was right. a lot. It was a lot. It was not set up eight stools you know, set up two stools to the mm -hmm. moderators and, and see what happens. They, I, I'd love to know how much it spent, well, but, but Sean, Sean, you tell me, wasn't this more la elaborately produced than most of these debates oh, from last cycle? 
two cycles ago. Exactly. I, I mean, th- this is the kind of geeky stuff that I care about, but I'm walking down the street <laughs> the day, and there's eight different power sources. They call them cows. And those right. are like thirty, forty thousand dollars a pop. But that mm. but that but that goes to the problem. And this is a real world problem for not just the second debate, but but certainly the third where they haven't named a media partner, which is if you want this to look like a general election, you know, just like a huge movie, yeah. a movie set, there's not very many people you can pick. And as right. you said, for this one, they chose, you know, the best, the place that would spend millions, I think, on producing it. So- so the, the, when we hosted this one, November 10th, 2015, yeah. at in Milwaukee, it was a smaller theater across from yep. where the, the Pfizer is now, right? I remember this literally to this day. We we're getting uh, the, the Wi-Fi just for the filing center. Just the filing center was $25,000 <laughs> just, right. just so that the media could hook up. And again, if you don't hook up the media, then no one's reporting on it. But that's one tiny, yeah. tiny piece. And and I think that, again, part of this is, is reminding people. That, that, that what you're getting at the balance you don't want it to look horrible you want people to tune in and there's only so many people with that budget and the rnc certainly doesn't have two million dollars and they don't have a production team and they don't know how to i mean it's so but but, but, but yep i agree i agree that's a huge problem but I, but i ask you guys because this is the 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 reality of where we are this morning exactly the same as where we were yesterday trump is the king right yep. Yep. no no yep. one no one's figured out how to take him on and here's the math Eight people, I don't care how well. I think four and four. I think four exceeded or got where they totally. wanted to be. Four didn't. But none of those four can say to their, their candidates in, 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 in good faith, you're going to go up in the polls. You're now going to challenge Trump. Six of them, right, have qualified for the next one. So how do you, how do you make this a game-changing thing? I think, that, I think the moderators did a good job. In trying to in trying to give people a chance and trying to not make it all about Trump, I thought they talked less about Trump than they might have. But Agreed. the problem again is, if you want to to create com- competition, even if there's only six people on the stage next time, it's a challenge. That's why the Trump people were confident they could skip it and get away with it. Oh. So I I say again to you, if you're DeSantis, I don't think it was a disaster, but how does he? adjust for the next one if his goal is as it is to, to be able to claim it's a two-person race and i'll say the hardest thing to me is vivek vivek, vivek right. was so uh, you know so vibrant so uh willing to take on all comers well Mark, I, you're I totally mean, right my, 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 been a, oh good no uh, the only been on that quick. podium yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just I think the two classes were different. You look online right now. You look at the conservative influencers. Vivek was by far the big winner, right? The donor mm-hmm. classes who I think DeSantis was playing to. He's saying we fill mm-hmm. my coffers with my super PAC. Exactly. This is what we're up against. And either it's going to be Vivek and then you're going to get your Trump. You're going to get two Trumps because uh, mm-hmm. that's what I think they're selling this <laughs> as. Or or and I mean, so last I think what DeSantis did last night was play to the super PAC and say, fund me. I can stand up. I'm a fighter, but I'm not. You know, so anyway, that that was my two cents. But, but again, totally agree with that. But physically, yeah, physically, you literally had Mark. To your point, I remember I was standing next to that state of Cleveland, right next to the President Trump, and when he just took control. In fact, I felt like that first question. It was like he threw the first chair in a bar fight. I mean, he was he was <laughs> taking charge. He was taking command. That's what Vivek did last night. Uh, he was taking charge to the point where literally physically at one point, his hand was over in, in uh, DeSantis' side of the podium. It was actually physically, literally distracting Ron DeSantis from making his point. And, and I thought that was such an interesting image because it was both literal and figurative at the same time. He was taking DeSantis out of being as aggressive as I think he needs to be if he's going to make inroads. He was exactly right. He was the stand-in for President Donald Trump, even though Donald Trump wasn't there. And the Santas, uh, again, was solid. He, 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 he made his donors feel okay, but that's not enough if he's going to make a real run at Donald Trump. Why do you think, I, why do you think they all felt, not them all, but why do you think the three most experienced people on the stage, right? Mm-hmm. Why do you think they felt compelled to go after him? Well, look, it's funny because one of the questions that came up was, how would you have advised people to answer the Trump question? 
uh, you know, when, when they ask for raising hands. I think part of it is, look, here's why. I, I think that there is a thread that they're trying to, to go through, which is to show the big donors that they're willing to take on Trump, but they don't want to offend the movement conservatives. So it's, it's constantly threading this needle. The other thing is, and I pointed this out over and over again, look, Trump's not here. He's at 50 percent. If you are one of those people on stage, my strategy would be to go from six to eight to, to 10 to, right. build, to try to crowd everyone else. I mean, Governor Walker's right. Four of those people mm -hmm. are going bye bye. And so the question is, can you pick up their one or two percent mm -hmm. and grow your four to eight? But but this is an wow. incremental game. This is going down the field in five yard increments as opposed to throwing the Hail Mary. <laughs> Right. right. And, but and but why but why feel compelled to take on the guy who's not the front runner? Why did well, they first of all, all I don't think that anybody did. I mean, no one no one took him on. They were like, you know, I would do that. I don't I didn't they look spent at a lot. I, I thought they spent a lot of time swatting back at him. I think I think Haley did. I think Pence did. I think Christie did. Everybody. Oh, well, every yeah, but Christie did. But I mean, that's the I mean, look, Christie. But, did, so, no, but so did Haley and Pence. They Pence acted did for sure. They like they, acted I think like they was the front runner. Yeah. Well, and because at that moment he was commanding the stage, I think some of them thought they'd go after DeSantis, but but his answers really didn't touch the others. Right. And that took the whole stage on. He's like, "You guys are all crazy. You're all the problem. I'm the right. one who can save you." But and but what, which essentially but, what Donald Trump has said in the past. Nikki Haley kind of got close when she said, "All of you in Washington are the problem." And oh, right. by the way, all of you talk. It was a great ins way to insert a line I knew she'd use about Margaret Thatcher saying, you know, if you want someone to talk, ask a man. If you want someone to get the job done, ask a woman. That was one of her, her, her better moments. But I think part of it was they all knew to get airtime with these goofy rules where you get 30 seconds if you reference. They had to land a blow on someone to right. dominate the stage. Right. And so right. when DeSantis didn't do that, they moved over to him. Uh, I, you were asking us again, again, from the standpoint of somebody who stood on that stage. I, I felt for Ron. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm kind of, if I was him, I'm kind of watching these uh, people attack the guy that my super PAC told me to attack. Why do I need to attack? <laughs> They're all doing a pretty good job. I'm just going to give good answers and hopefully that's enough to sustain the voters. But, but they spent, they burnt so much time trying to take him down. I don't think they took him down on the stage. Totally. I think there's some ticking time bombs. I want to bring up one other person who we have talked almost nothing about for good reason, because he proved what I thought would be the case, that he couldn't dominate the stage, which is Scott, right? Yeah. A lot of a lot of the establishment has said for a long time, well, I hope Ron DeSantis can take the people the stop Trump folks. I hoped mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis can take him down. And then when it became clear over the last few months that that was, to say the least, not a sure thing, they said, well, it's Tim Scott. All the senators like him, right? He's got super PAC money. Does any, do either of you think that based on last night, that Tim Scott is going to be the guy who the establishment looks to, or did he end it last night? Look, I asked Corey Gardner last night, who's the head of his super PAC, former senator from Colorado, who's very campaign savvy. And I said to him, you know, I, I said, how'd your guy do last night? Oh, he gave this top to me. And I said, absolutely. I, he gave a <laughs> great speech and he, and, and he inspires me and I want to go do better. And, but that's, that's not but I, I, I would I would argue he didn't even do that. I mean, he, no he didn't he didn't blow anybody away with that gear. Can I say this? Here's the, here's the answer. Governor Walker and you and me throughout the course of this conversation can all cite a line that was just said by somebody else. Name one memorable line that Tim Scott gave last night. And I'm going, uh, we, you can't. But, 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 but we all agree. But my question to you is, is he dead because because of last night or. No, he's got he enough have... money to he's got he's got enough money to keep him going for a little bit, but is it going to get anywhere? No. He got you, money. You think and that's the definitive? only thing the only thing he did that was that was truly good on his part was the pitch he made directly to Iowa voters to caucus with him. Um, but I don't know if he can last that long. I mean, that's the right. key question. If he's but, got the money but, and but he it's it all in. He'd have to win there, then there's nothing else after that. He and Nikki aren't going to win South Carolina because they're going to divide the vote if they're both in it and the president's going to take it there. So the, the other interesting thing about about that was, you know, he if anything, and I don't, he's obviously not running for this reason. Uh, but I do think if you're if you're sitting at home and you're uh, President Trump, you, you look and say, no, that might be a good guy to put on the tick. Everybody. Oh, likes I him. He didn't say anything that made people dislike him. Um, but I thought he, I thought he killed himself, not definitively, but I thought he hurt himself badly just for that because Trump likes central casting, right? Right. 
He was not. No. He, yeah, well, I, yeah I, but he put I, Mike Pence on for can, your, you know, he put Mike yeah, Pence on who was but, not but can you, but can you, but, but Sean, can you look at that performance by Tim Scott, if you're Trump, who you know well, and say, yeah, that guy would right. clean Kamala Harris's clock. I don't so, think you really, can. And, and this, I just want to, because this, there's a, Paul, there's a bunch of questions. We only have time for this last one yeah. for Paul, yeah. but it gets to your point because Paul asked, did anyone make the case to be Trump's running mate last night? Here's the point that I keep making about being VP. It's a concentric circle. They have to want the job and Trump has to want them. And there's like three yeah. people that fit in the middle of that right now. Yeah. Tim Scott has watched the Mike Pence movie and the Mike Pence movie <laughs> ends with a guy who was loyal for four years. And at the very end, you know, the, this is the movie where at the very end the guy dies and you go, oh, I didn't, you know, I, I, I kind of almost saw that coming. No one on that stage last night, and this includes Tim Scott, is going to be Donald Trump's running mate because they've all watched the Mike Pence movie and said, I'm not going right. to end that way. Right. Uh, that's my take. And so I, I think that now here's what I will tell you to answer the question. Who wasn't on the stage, but who was at the Fox debate last night? Christy Nome. Do you know how many commercials Christy Nome appeared in last night? <laughs> it was, I literally was like watching that thing, be, you know, it was between TikTok ads, Mr. Wonderful pitching something, and Christy Nome. I was like, well, unless Mr. Wonderful's trying to be Trump's running mate, but he's Canadian, uh, then this is a Christy Nome audition. If, yep. she's on the, if she's on the ticket last night is part of American history because of what you just said. But I, I really do think Tim, Tim, of all the people who fell short, Right. Because the other three people who fell short, Christie and uh, Governor Burgum and Governor Hutchinson, not a lot of people thought them as, you know, in the mix right. to be the nominee. The one who totally. fell short, who's problematic to me, is Tim Scott. And again, that's his gear. None of the three of us, I think, look at his performance last night and say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that's how bad he was or that's how non non factor. That's pretty much what I thought was going to be. And I don't know that he can do better. Yeah, um, the format we, doesn't work for him. Yep. Yeah. I, I, we, we've we've hit our time limit. We've you know obviously a bunch of questions in the queue here. But I I uh, before I before we wrap this up, is there any final thoughts that you guys don't think that we got to? Because I'm going down my list. We've clearly gone way through everything that I had to bring up. But I I want to make sure Mark or Governor Walker, is there anything that you think that we've not talked about that's important to convey? I I think the biggest thing is whether Ron DeSantis, he certainly, as Governor Walker said, I think he certainly got calmed his current donors. But does he bring in new donors off of that performance? I don't think so. But that's, to me, the biggest question, because I don't think Ramaswamy is going to be the nominee. Governor. And after all this, all this buzz, it's all going to go away today when the president turns himself in and, and, yeah. Atlanta, or, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so these uh, guys uh, got to figure out what they got to what they're going to do to overcome the king, because that's what he is, the king of, of uh, media attention and all of this. Yeah, so two points that draft right off of what you just said to wrap this up. One, I think it'll be interesting to see who not just qualifies for the stage at Simi Valley at the Reagan Library on September 27th, but who shows up, because I think a couple of these guys <laughs> might not make it another month. Number two, yeah. I will tell you that the bracketing effort from the Trump campaign last night oh. in the spin room, there were literally security signs. Do not let Jason Miller, do not let the Trump campaign. Chris Lasavita, Jason Miller, Stephen Chung, Matt Gates were all in the spin room last night. They had more surrogates than most of these other campaigns. They're bracketing effort beyond that. They had dinner. We brought this up on the call with reporters the night before. It was impressive. And I think that this just shows that it's not, I mean, it's, it's you know, Trump is Trump, but his campaign and the mechanics of it are, are much more enhanced than they ever have been. Uh, totally, totally agree. So, totally agree. All right. Gentlemen, uh, thanks for getting up again. Amazing uh, conversation, and, and what a great way to break down this debate. Thank you for everyone who's watching. I appreciate all the questions. Sorry we didn't get to all of them. Uh, but again, share this with your friends, and uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be back for the next debate at CV Valley. Have a good one.